what true Islam is. We don't see that. What we see from our perspective is the same as if we had Methodists trying to gun down Baptists in the streets and anybody else, Hindus, Muslims, atheists in the streets. We don't see that with any other religion other than Islam. And so that is a responsibility not for Donald Trump to defend Islam. It is a responsibility for Islam to define itself. It is a responsibility for the peaceful people of Islam to take it over rather than the jihadis. He goes on to say that presidential candidates have alienated many from learning about Islam. No, it is the radical Muslims and their violence that are alienating people, Muhammad Ali. Now, we see residents in Trump Tower, Chicago, say, I wish Donald Trump would shut up. He's going to get us killed. We're going to have an attack from Muslims. Think about that. If they're going to kill you because their religion is criticized, they are the problem. Trump is not the problem. This is the mindset of people who get on the trains to go to the concentration camps, being as obsequious as they can because they don't want to cross their leaders. It is very, very dangerous to have that attitude. But look at this attitude from the UK. The Daily Mail in the UK has pointed out that a legislator there has branded Donald Trump a hate preacher. But even more impressive is the claim that police, quote, fear for their lives, unquote, and radicalized London. In other words, if you criticize them, they will kill you. The police are supposed to stand up to thugs like that. They're not supposed to kowtow to them. They're not supposed to give in to this intolerance. This is what is wrong. It is not tolerance. It is nothing but cowardice. Why are people concerned about it? Let's understand what this looks like. Let's look at a country, our closest ally, Saudi Arabia. Let's look at what an Islamic theocracy looks like, because that's what the goal of Islam has been since the time of Muhammad. It has been a combination of religion and politics to establish a global governance. 16 things that can get you executed in Saudi Arabia. And as you go down this, you've got some of the things, okay, murder, rape, adultery. Adultery? Wait a minute. That's a, that's a capital offense? Get you beheaded there? Treason, consensual sex with a gay, uh, consensual gay sex, arson, robbery, burglary, drug dis uh, distribution, a capital offense, get you beheaded, drug prohibition. Now, here we get into the theocracy part of it. Apostasy, apostasy can get your head cut off in Saudi Arabia, our close ally. Consumption of intoxicants, sorcery, and witchcraft. This is what we have to look forward to as we surrender our culture to Islam, as we open up our borders, as Jeb Bush, Hillary Clinton, and the rest of the uh, GOP and Democrat field pretty much want us to do. This is why voters are rejecting them. It is why they are embracing Trump. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Now, as we went to break, we were talking about 16 things that could get you executed in our ally, Saudi Arabia's country, the uh, Sharia law that they have there, things like consensual gay sex, apostasy having consumption of intoxicants. But of course, those are just a few of the things that they will cut your head off for and that benevolent ally of ours, Saudi Arabia. We just saw this last fall, 28 Muslims who were beheaded by the Saudi government uh, blamed for the stampede that they have about every other year as part of the, uh, uh, the religious ceremonies that they have there in Mecca. They have frequently had stampedes where hundreds of people are killed. This year it was particularly high, 1,300 people died. So they blamed it on 28 Muslims, they said, did not follow the rules, and they cut their heads off, because quite frankly, that kind of sums it up. You don't follow the rules in Saudi Arabia, you get your head cut off. This year, they're already at 150, the highest that they've had in two decades. They're talking about how they're going to behead another 50 on a single day, people that they have accused of terrorism, but who in reality are simply a political opposition party, the Shiites. These are not people for the most part, who are, these are people who are protesting. These are people that they're trying to shut down any freedom of speech. You understand how that goes. You understand how the label of terrorism is thrown around. But of course, in America, we have people in Chicago at the Trump Tower saying, don't criticize the Muslims, they're dangerous. You have people in the UK, politicians and the police, cowering in fear before the Muslims because they are afraid that they're going to enact violence against them. But in America, the voters like Trump's proposed Muslim ban. We see that 66% of likely Republican voters favored a temporary ban on Muslims entering the United States. 46% of all voters favored that versus 40% who opposed that. 59% of voters believe that it is too easy for foreigners to legally enter the United States. It's a winning position, but it is a position that is opposed by all the mainstream candidates for some reason. For example, Paul Ryan, the new Speaker of the House, came out and criticized Donald Trump in very strong terms. He says, that, that is not what this party stands for. More importantly, it is not what this country stands for. Yes, what they stand for is open borders and throwing away the safety that they promise you. They're always taking your liberties, promising you safety, except they could care less when it comes to this. And now we see that the Congress itself is considering easing passage in the United States for immigrants. They say that, uh, 
Many have called this an unprecedented right that would allow immigrants easier access to relocate into the United States. This is being offered by Senator Patrick Leahy. It's an amendment that would prohibit the U.S. government from barring individual, any individual from entering the country based on their religion. And again, as I pointed out, and as we were just talking about with Saudi Arabia, Islam is not simply a religion. It is a combination of religion and politics. That's what makes it so dis uh, dangerous. That was what was bad about Christianity, was when it was combined with politics. That's when different religious sects within Christianity were executing each other. It's that combination of trying to dominate someone politically and combining that with the passion of religion. But going on with this, they point out this amendment to say, no, we're going to make it easier for immigrants to come into the United States. We're going to fly them in. We're not even going to have them try to sneak in uh, through Central and South America. We're going to fly them in and we're going to lower the barriers. They say this is an attempt uh, as a response to Trump's statement. Now, this is what one of the, person, uh, one of the people analyzes, and I think it's a very good analysis. They said this amendment will establish the progressive goal of creating a right to global immigration. Their solution to global income inequality. Now, as Rand Paul has pointed out, there is no right to become an American citizen. There is no right. In order to establish, though, this right that the progressives want to establish, and in that I would include people like Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio and others who are pro-open borders, when they want to establish this right to come in and live in America, what they do is they destroy the rights of the people who are already citizens here. And they point out it would mean that you could not favor a Christian Syrian priest over a fundamentalist Muslim cleric. That if you denied the cleric, you'd be paving the road to them having standing in order to sue for entry from a foreign country. A radical imam could demand the right for a tourist visa to deliver a speech. Or that a member of a pagan cult could demand that they be given a foreign worker visa to take an American job. Well, quite frankly, that's what the open borders are about. That's what the Democrats are selling us. They're saying that other people can demand the right to take your job. They can demand that you educate them for free. So the response to the proposal that we need to know who's coming into our country because there are jihadis uh, operating in these countries, the response from Congress is, let's make it easier. The response from the leader of the GOP is, that's un-American. And of course, the response from the White House was, that disqualifies Donald Trump for running from the, uh, for president. Rand Paul, however, backs up Trump and points out there's 10 things that make Obama unqualified for president. Let's run through those real quickly. He points out, number one, he tried to take over a sixth of the economy in Obamacare. He wrecked the system. He hurt patients and taxpayers. Number two, Obama thinks executive order is legislation. He thinks it's how you make law. Number three, Obama fought an undeclared unconstitutional war in Libya, turned it into a jihadist wonderland. Number four, fighting an undeclared unconstitutional war in Syria and trying to put ISIS in Damascus. That should disqualify Obama from being president, Paul points out. Paul goes on to say, Obama signed into law the indefinite detention of American citizens. That was the NDAA, which was signed on New Year's Eve 2011. Number six, his copy of the Bill of Rights obviously goes from one to three, skipping the Second Amendment. No, I would say that Obama's uh, version of the Bill of Rights has redacted every one of the Bill of Rights. Every single one of them is crossed out. Number seven, Rand says Obama is disqualified because the federal appeals court has ruled his NSA spying on every American was illegal. Number eight, Obama has added more debt than anyone in history. Number nine, Obama approved an attorney general who thinks speech against Muslims is a bigger threat than terrorism. Number 10, Obama's EPA rules by executive fiat trying to kill an entire American industry and a way of life. And of course, we could add to that uh, his imprisonment of whistleblowers is uh, uh, coming after more whistleblowers than anyone since 1917. And of course, his drone assassination program. But of course, the Supreme Court doesn't have a problem with Obama's drone assassination program. A couple of days ago, we reported on Infowars.com that the uh, Supreme Court said Obama can continue assassination program in secret even against Americans. The New York Times and the American Civil Liberties Union has been fighting for the release of memos from the federal government that would talk about their internal discussions about the legality of killing not only Anwar al-Awlaki, but later his 16-year-old son by drone assassination. And of course, the assassination list is called the disposition matrix. They don't even call it a list. Think about the fact that we have a president who has an assassination list 
He also has a no-fly list. Now, the no-fly list, I think we really ought to